Thank you so much. Um, this has been a marvelous conference. I have loved every single talk. And uh, what I'd like to do today is um, I'll tell you a little bit about my story. My father, when I was a young woman, died of uh, glioma-blastoma. Um, he had um, about a fourth of his brain, his parietal lobe, resected. And he came out of that surgery um, a very different person, but somehow not degraded. And that really changed my whole orientation about the brain. And I, at that time, I was completing my PhD in limbic system neuroanatomy. So starting then, I became very interested in GBM. And what I'd like to do today is to tell you um, some of the experimental therapies that we're using at the um, Ames Institute, Ames stands for Advanced Medical Science Institute, where we provide integrative um, neurology. And, um, and I have uh, been very interested in GBM all these years. And I want to talk about um, using uh, a natural medicine called curcumin in the treatment of GBM. And I also want to talk about the use of uh, non-invasive local regional hyperthermia, which I learned about uh, from a colleague in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm going to share my slides and we can start. Um, so this is uh, the work that, uh, uh, that I have done with my two residents, Dr. Milani and Dr. Jaffe. Uh, we're here in Seattle. Um, so the kinds of things that uh, naturopathic physicians use um, in GBM patients are melatonin. These are or have been oral administrated um, natural medicines, curcumin, boswellia, and then recently, because of new data coming out about uh, cannabis therapy, recommending that patients um, use both uh, THC and CBD, based on a paper that appeared, and down here I show that um, recurrence is, um, is modified by the use of a one-to-one -one CBD to, uh, to THC formula of an uh, FDA uh, approvable cannabis product. And the median overall survival in these patients was 12.5 months. And this is the paper here showing the use um, of cannabis. And then we also use um, boswellia um, orally because it is um, uh, really quite good for reducing brain edema. And right here shows you our data. Um, what we do at Ames Institute is we have a um, IRB approved observational study. Every single GBM patient who comes to us, we request them to allow us to observe them uh, regardless of what, whether they come back to our clinic or not. And then we, we have a database. And here is our survival curve of the first 19 patients that, um, that we treated. And we have not yet attained a 50% uh, uh, death rate. So I can't tell you what the median overall survival is yet. And, and two things that we started doing recently is because curcumin has so many applications, so many molecular pathways are affected by curcumin that are, uh, that are appropriate for targeting GBM cells. We decided that we would investigate the parenteral use of curcumin because it's not bioavailable very much um, orally. And then we started investigating uh, therapy used by a Dr. Parmar in uh, Vancouver, uh, and I'll show you some data from that. So cannabis, uh, very interesting uh, therapy. It's complex. There are at least four known anti-cancer molecules in cannabis, but this slide just shows you the multiple mechanisms of action. And that's one of the things that I think is so interesting about natural cancer medicines is that most of them have multiple mechanisms of action. Boswellia is uh, when it's uh, given in high oral doses, three to four grams a day orally, um, has not only anti-edema um, uh, abilities, but it also has anti-cancer abilities. And these molecules that I'm talking about are lipophilic, so they go through the blood-brain barrier fairly easily. 
Uh, the characteristics of our 19 patients, um, they were in their mid fifties. Um, most of them um, kind of equally distributed between men and women. Almost everybody has surgical resection. Almost everybody did chemo and radiation. And most of our patients were methylated. Um, and some of our patients um, had the IDH mutations, but most were wild type. And I, I only have treated four patients so far receiving IV curcumin. So here are those patients, and I, I don't have much to say, except that um, uh, two of them are still alive. Um, this is curcumin. Um, it comes from the turmeric group. Um, curcumin is a molecule in turmeric. Um, and here is the structure of it. It too is lipophilic. And the multiple mechanisms of curcumin are quite fascinating. Um, and besides uh, the RB pathway, P53 modulation, the STAT pathway, the uh, multiple kinase pathways, and then the PI3K AKT pathway, and the sonic hedgehog pathway, and also most famously, its, uh, its ability as an anti-inflammatory to modulate the NF kappa B. The other thing that is true about curcumin is that it is known to uh, modulate the expression, to suppress the expression of EGF receptor sites on glioma cells. So it seemed to me like an obvious choice for a GBM therapy. And this is another slide showing you the many, many mechanisms at the membrane down here in the, in the nucleus and cell division and um, also in mitochondrial, it just is an amazing molecule. Um, we obtain our curcumin from um, Germany because it's not available in the United States. There are companies uh, trying to develop nano curcumin for GBM, but they haven't gotten very far. I don't know why. Uh, the dose, we've done a lot of dose studies and we now know that you gotta get up to 20 milligrams per kilogram to have an effective response. When I first used this um, on a GBM patient, um, I think all of us, all we physicians have the experience, if you give a patient for the first time a therapy and it works, you are, it has a very big impression and you tend to use it again in kind of a Bayesian statistical method. And so the first patient I gave IV curcumin to came in completely aphasic, uh, with a left uh, temporal, huge temporal lobe lesion. And um, I gave him, uh, I got him up to 20 milligrams per kilogram of curcumin. And, and the next appointment, which was a week later, he was speaking. So that really made a big impression on me. And yes, he did go on to die, but I have been investigating curcumin ever since. This is um, what we do is we compare our patients we match them to the SEER database and we match by age at diagnosis, race, and gender. This is the um, SEER curve that matches with our 19 patients. The median overall survival, not surprisingly, is 10 months. Um, it's been wonderful to see the advancements with tumor treatment fields and, and uh, Temidar prescriptions really improving things, but, and our curve, you know, it's looking pretty good so far. Um, our disease-free survival is, um, is 25 months, whereas um, if you look, um, most papers sh are showing something, uh, one paper I found, Kelly et al., 2017, a 7.4-month disease-free survival. And so I think there's something to be said about IV curcumin. We're pursuing it, but now I want to talk about um, the last few minutes that I have this method that is widespread uh, for treating solid tumors in Germany as well as Hungary. And it's called Loco Regional Hyperthermia. Oncotherm is the company. This is the device. Uh, the patient lies down on this. The, uh, the, the device generates heat and electromagnetic signals. Um, and it's uh, just uh, the patient's head is right here. Uh, sometimes doesn't even touch the skin. And this company has figured out how to get, well, how many megahertz, um, how deep the, the heat penetrates, 18 centimeters is really good. 
and tumor uh, heats up to 40 degrees, um, uh, hyperthermia um, for so many mechanisms of action uh, kills cancer cells. And this is a slide um, that I had to get from um, a, a principal investigator in Germany because the, the science I'm talking about now hasn't really been published in the United States. And so here is a diagram showing you the multiple actions of hyperthermia and the ultimate effect on cell death and apoptosis. And all of these various mechanisms of action have, I, I was convinced listening to an hour and a half lecture that all these steps have been uh, published and measured in other, in other venues. This is um, comparing um, what, what this company has done is to do a number of studies. And the one that came to my attention was this one. Dr. Gurdev Parmar, who's up in Fort Langley, British Columbia, who's a colleague of mine, was getting really good data on GVM. And so um, his patients are in this. And here is the pool of six uh, hyperthermia studies, uh, 325 patients, and here's the survival curve and then comparing it to various things. Um, this is the SEER database. Um, and then uh, I think this one is for Temidar and radiation. And then here, oh, here we go. Here's uh, this curve for hyperthermia. Here's the radiation and Temidar. Um, and then here's radiation and Temidar. And just showing that there may be some extra benefit to local regional hyperthermia. So that's why I refer my patients to Dr. Parmar. Um, and here's his data, we confirmed it. Um, he had 58 consecutive GBM patients and his median overall survival is 21 months. Um, these patients also were getting the standard of care. Very few of our patients do not get standard of care. Um, and most of them uh, come to us wanting standard of care. Um, so this is, I thought, uh, we confirmed that um, this was effective in a community clinical setting. This, um, it turns out that we in the United States are somewhat ignorant about developments in hyperthermia all over the world. Um, this technology is available in many countries. Um, in the United States, there are um, only um, a few experimental sites. Um, there are many, many journals and many, many articles. And this is what the device is that has the most data. These are various Oncotherm publications. And so the next step is, um, is I'm hoping to have a collaboration with the Seattle um, uh, Institute of Neuroscience, or your group, to put in a National Cancer Institute grant for a phase two, uh, probably a, a delay treatment, you know, a, a weightless control RCT um, in the treatment of GBM. And finally, um, I just want you, if you want to contact me for any reason about what we're doing, uh, or any, any advice you have, please contact me uh, either by phone or by email, and I will turn it back to the MC.